Hello friends and welcome to Japan Photo Explore. In this episode we're visiting my favourite place to photograph landscapes in Japan, Bie on the island of Hokkaido. We're going to give you some top travel and photography tips for visiting Bie. Never heard of Bie? Neither had I. I discovered it in Paris, where I saw an exhibition of photos shot in Hokkaido, Japan, by English photographer Michael Kenner. I was stunned by his images. I could not get them out of my mind, and I was determined that someday I would visit this otherworldly place depicted in his photos. My name's Nick Pitsis. I'm a photographer in Australia and I've left a warm sunny Australian summer to come and photograph Japan in winter. That's me just about to board the train to take me to Hokkaido for the first time. Excited does not begin to describe how I felt. It was the start of an obsession that has had me returning to Japan every winter up until 2020. Bie is near the centre of Hokkaido and is just one of the locations in Kenner's photos. It was the start of my love affair with Hokkaido. Bie is beautiful throughout the year, but to get the minimalist photos that I was after, winter was the only time to come. On this trip, I've returned with my photographer friend, Ted. You know, Ted, the thing that excites me about photographing in snow is that it's like starting with a blank canvas and you can choose which elements to add to your composition. The snow helps so much with minimalist shots like this, Nick, but other times you have to work for it. So true. In this location, there are too many distracting elements and the light is kind of flat, so I reframed and waited. Then the sun just peeked out to give me that shadow. And for me, that's the icing on the cake. The thing is, when you're dealing with minimalist compositions, you don't have many elements to play with, so their placement on the screen is critical. It's worth spending some time to experiment. The first shot of the greenhouse frames is OK, but it still has too much background detail. Now with a change of composition, this second shot removes all of that and uses shadows for dramatic effect. It's one of my favourite photographs. I'm looking for minimalism and I think I've got it with this shot, Nick. Classic beer minimalism, Ted. Particularly in winter, the weather conditions and time of day will have a huge impact on the types of photos you can make. All these photos were taken in the same location and the changing light has made it possible to create a range of moods. You'd think with all this snow about, farming would just about be impossible, wouldn't you? Not necessarily so though. Cows still get out to have a walk and forage where they can. Isn't that lovely? It sure is, Ted. And we can't forget that the rolling hills of beer are mostly farms, private property. So without specific permission, you can't get any closer to photograph some things than the nearest roadside. This can be a problem in landscape photography where you typically tend to use wider focal length lenses. But here, a longer lens is much more useful. Wow, 
Have you ever seen so much snow in one place? I guess it helps being up here on a ridge. Look at that farmhouse, Nick. It's totally isolated. How picture perfect is that? It totally is, Ted. And with a longer lens, we can get the shots from right here on the road. But look, behind us, on the other side of this ridge, is this. That is totally minimalist. Well, as photographer Elliot Erwitt put it, photography is the art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. Not that I'm saying beer is ordinary, but wherever you are, you have to look beyond the obvious shot. Beer is well known for landscape photography, and it's quite likely that you'll be sharing your visit with others. And what you'll find is that most of them will be pointing their camera in the same direction, at the main site. My advice is to take the shots of the main attraction, then turn around and try and find photographs unique to you. I took this photo, which has become one of the most popular photos I've ever taken, while walking back to the car park. One of the challenges with landscape photography is just finding the best locations. And in beer, the local tourism board make it just a bit easier with this excellent local map that is a great starting point. Just pick your destination, punch in the map code number straight into your car GPS and go. But what you'll find here is that because the area gets so much snow, not all the roads shown on the car GPS, or on a map for that matter, are accessible in winter. Whenever we hit a road closure, it becomes an impromptu parking spot to go for a walk and find something unique. If you have the confidence to drive on snow, a renter car is definitely the most convenient and flexible way of getting around in winter. Although it is also possible by taxi. What I most admire about the people in this frozen landscape is their resilience and their respect for one another. Even though it's possible to visit beer as a day trip, it's better to stay overnight, or preferably a couple of nights, to give yourself the best chance of getting a good range of lighting conditions for your photos. And a bonus of visiting beer in winter is that it's low season, and offers some of the best value accommodation I've ever come across in Japan. I'm glad we decided to stay in beer, Nick. We can work at a relaxed pace and put more thought into what photos to take and how to take them. And we can always come back tomorrow, so there's no fear of missing out. I know that beer is an absolute favourite place for landscape photographers in spring and summer. But for me, nothing beats it in winter. You know I feel the same, Ted. It was Michael Kenner's winter photos that drew us here. But I can't finish this video without mentioning Shinzo Maeda, the legendary Japanese photographer who first revealed the beauty of this area to the world. Beer is not your typical landscape location, but our visit here has been nothing short of amazing, and I hope our tips will help you get the most out of a visit here. But really, a lot of what I've covered here can be applied more generally to snow photography and landscape photography anywhere. Have you been to beer or want to travel here? Let me know in the comments below. And please click that like button to help the channel grow. 
If you want to see more stories about traveling and photographing in Japan, make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get upload notifications. See you in the next video.